Good day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. All right, Monday evening here in Australia, so getting ready for Monday morning stateside time, and the market is up ever so slightly again, edging so close to $2.4 trillion now, so 3.2% up, which is nice. Now, I believe it might be a sort of holiday over in the States, so I don't know if the market's actually going to be open today, so we might have to wait till sort of Tuesday evening here Australia time, which is Tuesday morning stateside time, to really see what the market's doing. I, I, yeah, I think there's some kind of, it's either public holiday or banking holiday or something like that, I think I heard someone say. But... We'll take the market being up 3.2%. It is pretty nice. Again, just remembering that any CME gaps that get opened on a weekend generally get closed either on the Sunday sort of evening before Monday market, Monday morning markets open up or sometimes sort of Monday. Now, again, not always, but 95 plus percent of CME gaps eventually get closed. They don't always have to be closed straight away, but just something to keep in mind. So, you know, we could pump up to 52, 53,000 or something, and then in the next 24 hours, again, we come right back down to sort of 51, 49 or something like that. Completely possible. But anyway, let's move on. Big uh, volume down, again, that's to be expected over the weekend, but uh, Bitcoin dominance are uh, still under 41%, so kind of hovering around the same space. And look, these gas prices just get more and more expensive. Uh, and we'll have a look at a story that has a little bit to do with that, which is both uh, good uh, and worrying all at the same time. But look, just looks like a green market. It's basically a sea of red. We can see there's very, sorry, a sea of green. There's hardly any red there. So what's done the best in the last 24 hours though? What's the best mover, the biggest mover, in the top 100? Who quant just continues to fire off. 43% in 24 hours, very nice. Filecoin having a nice move, 25%. Phantom has been doing quite well for the last sort of probably couple of weeks. OMG, there you go, and things we haven't sort of heard from in a while. Chainlink, I did say, I brought in my video that it looked like it was... Uh, quite low and ready to pop and hopefully this is just the start of it you know do we start to you know maybe you know dare to see a hundred dollar chain link uh you know maybe even more we'll have to wait and see never financial advice just my personal opinion eos out of nowhere good lord quantum double digit moves i mean just all over the place 10 plus percent and then plenty of high single digit moves as well and it does move down into the the lower single digits the graph uh, as i spoke again the other day was looking quite primed uh, and again the graph and chain link i think they still look pretty good on the charts just because they've had a move up doesn't mean they don't have a whole don't possibly have a whole lot more to go all right, what about losses though? We've had a look at the gains. The gains look sweet, and that's from a mere 3.2% move. Have a look at those kind of uh, gains. What hasn't performed so well then in the top 100? XE Cash, Arweave, again, Arweave had a really good pump. Matic has had a good pump as well. I mean, this um, this was down at like $1.20 or something, literally maybe like a week ago. So it has had a pretty good move. Uh, and again, I did bring the chart of Matic saying that I thought it looked pretty good and like it was primed and ready to go. So a little bit of a pullback uh, to be expected. But I mean, look at these losses. Single digits and only one mid single digit and then everything else is low single digits. And we got what? 10 coins that are in the negative out of the top 100. So 10%, very low. And then everything else is starting to make gains. So there we go. Quite a nice looking market at the moment. And again, the scary thing is we still haven't got into that kind of euphoric stage. This is just people building positions early uh, in this part of the bull run. Again, in my personal opinion, not financial advice. But that's what it looks like. Your search on Google, people looking at Bitcoin and that uh, is still quite low in comparison to where it's been. Same with crypto in general, but yet these markets are making these kind of moves. So again, I mean, this move doesn't look good, but those kind of moves do look good. And again, it's in my opinion, still early. I think, you know, we still probably a couple of months uh, worth of sort of upside. Now that literally may only be one or two months, but I definitely think this could easily push out into, you know, February, March next year. But again, it's really hard to pick again when the exact top's going to be, let alone how much the exact top's going to be. But I just get the feeling there's still plenty more to come. Time will tell. All right, let's go over to the Bitcoin chart and have a look. Again, 
Bitcoin just tracking inside this thing just keeps bouncing off it almost perfectly every single time. And here we go, making a move. Again, consider that we could have a pullback. And again, it wouldn't be unheard of to again, maybe come back down and, you know, test some kind of key levels like sort of 47, 48,000. Completely possible, still would keep us basically inside this uh, upwards trending channel that we've been in for quite some time. But there's no guarantees in life. We don't have to do that. It could become Monday morning. There's some amazing, or sorry, Tuesday morning, because it's uh, the markets are shut, I believe. Uh, some amazing news, and then we just start to you know push up into the higher stratospheres uh, of this uh, channel, which we've been in for a really long time. And again, the upside at the moment, so as of today, would be, you know, we could be at about a hundred thousand right now. On the upside of this channel so just under 100,000 and oh sorry one hundred and one thousand dollars so thereabouts is where we could be now I'm not saying it's gonna jump there but again we just got to go back and have a look at this we've been in here for quite a long time this is where we've been ranging we get to the top we get to the bottom we get to the top and break out we come back down we broke out for quite some time and then again we had that big pullback because we were outside that channel for so long that is when things are really frothy so of course it's going to come down here and have a correction shake out the weekends who's here for the long term who's just the traders who's using too much leverage that's what all this was and again if you were you know smart enough and were buying around the 20th of july i mean the gains that you've already made are quite substantial now again we do need to just consider that this could be a dead cat bounce. Completely possible, I don't think it is. There's nothing that kind of indicates that it could be, at least to me, but it's definitely possible that it could be. So just keep that in mind. Again, for me, I'm an investor. I like what I've put money into. I'm fairly confident most of them are gonna be around long-term. There might be one or two that won't that I'm a little bit iffy about, and we'll have a look at uh, one very shortly, but I think most of my projects are hopefully gonna be around for a while. And I have most of my money in things that I am fairly confident in. Uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin, they really do take up a major part of my position. But this is really what I'm looking for. We're back in here and we just keep ticking along uh, right uh, in the middle of it there. So I am quite happy and I just will continue to kind of keep my eye on that until we really kind of break some of these levels. So again, you know, come back down and bounce off 42,000 would be scary. Uh, but I wouldn't have lost too much faith. But if we went under 42,000, I would definitely be worried. And I would seriously be worried if we sort of broke down below this 28,000. Uh, I definitely would be concerned. But I, I just don't see it happening at the moment. Whenever the actual bear market comes, completely possible. Until then, I just can't see it. All right, a couple of stories that I wanted to bring to you. So, Oil producers and Bitcoin miners, they've met up in Texas to discuss cooperative mining possibilities. There's a lot of excess energy that gets wasted when they m mine, excuse me, mine oil. Why not put it to use and mine Bitcoin at the same time? That would make uh, a lot of sense both financially, uh, but just really financially make a whole lot of sense. They've got all this wasted energy and look, oil we are going to start using less and less of it. We are moving to uh, you know, more greener pastures. Uh, and so while they're still mining oil, they may, may as well be mining Bitcoin at the same time to make up for that wasted energy. It doesn't make it green uh, Bitcoin though, which is you know something that a lot of people are focused on, particularly uh, corporations and that. So whether they're going to buy that Bitcoin or not, I think they will try to focus on more green bitcoins but you know the the average retailer will still buy this because you know we don't have those kind of limitations on us and look in the end oil is not going to stop being produced overnight so if they have excess energy why not put it to good use i think there'll be uh plenty of this going on uh for as long as oil continues to be produced how long that is who knows we'll wait and see all right this i found very interesting so we know DeFi is it's big at the moment and you know short of some real horrible regulation which I just don't see coming I think DeFi will be one of the biggest gainers over the next kind of five to ten years if not even more I think it'll seriously outstrip Ethereum Solana you name it they will 
they'll be run down by some of these really good DeFi programs. Again, just my personal opinion. But what's interesting is there's nearly 200 billion. We're getting close, so that's a lot of money. Uh, and also, a lot of uh, the total value is still locked up in Ethereum, believe it or not, quite a majority, but it is starting to uh, lose pay. So there's 176 billion, and it's across various blockchains, like Ethereum, Binance, Terra, uh, has been doing quite well. Polygon, we know, is doing very well. Solana has been on absolute fire, and even Avalanche is coming after it. But Ethereum still commands $130 billion of that $176 billion. It'll be interesting to see how long Ethereum can hold on to that kind of place if it really can't hurry up and get these gas issues sorted because they are, they're crazy at the moment. It's ridiculous, and the scary thing is we don't even have a lot of retail here. There is some retail, it's the early retail, and it's just super expensive. Anyone who's gonna come and have a look at Ethereum, as soon as they buy some and try and send it anywhere and possibly lose all their Ethereum because they were trying to send you know, 100 bucks worth and they lost 50 of it uh, trying to send it, that'll be it, they'll be out of Ethereum and they will start looking at things like Solana, uh, Avalanche, Terra and all the rest of it. So, I. I I just hope Ethereum hurries up and gets this sorted out. I really like Ethereum. I'm really fond of it. Uh, I've got, you know, it, it's my biggest holding now because of how well it's done. I would hate to see it fail simply because it couldn't hurry up and get the scaling sorted out while things like, you know, Solana are really sort of taking up uh, the lion's share of that kind of stuff. But again, you know, Polygon is on Ethereum and it is an L2. So I guess there's some uh, nice things to look forward to. Now, this one I found interesting. Institutional interest in Litecoin is on the rise. Grayscale Litecoin Trust is up by 32%. I've been a fan of Litecoin for a while, but it really just hasn't performed as well as what I thought. I got into cryptocurrencies late 2017, so that's when I saw Litecoin. I mean, it just went sort of crazy. It was one of my best performers. So I was like, oh, I really like Litecoin. Uh, got a little bit disenchanted, obviously, by the crypto market and the, in the bear in the bear market because I'd never been through one before. Uh, when I got back in, bought some Litecoin, got it quite cheap. Uh, I think it picked it up for like forty, fifty dollars or something, but it just hasn't performed anywhere near as well as some of the other coins that I had. But it seems like things might be changing. So why might it be pumping? Well, there are two reasons here, this article says. And first off is which that yesterday during the Darlington Raceway, uh, racer Landon Castle, a crypto, crypto enthusiast himself, became the first driver to be paid entirely in crypto, specifically in Litecoin. So that's what Litecoin really needs. Number one, it needs some more development. It hasn't had too much, but there is talk of a cross-chain compatibility with Cardano and now it seems like the institutions are starting to get into it which is good and secondly Litecoin crossing $200 once again which is good and they say this is a huge milestone moreover it still continues to rise placing the seven day gains at 73 percent uh, sorry 34.72 percent as a result not only institutions but also retail investors are drawn to Litecoin now Litecoin is one of those coins that you can buy through PayPal. And I really think the PayPal effect will probably be something that will help to save Litecoin. Whether it can save it really long term, I don't know. I think Litecoin, uh, it just doesn't have a lot of fanfare sort of going for it. It's not hyped or anything. It was back when Charlie Lee was right into it and putting lots of tweets and posts about it. But then he obviously sold very close to the top. Uh, that kind of hurt the project and yeah, it hasn't done a whole lot ever since. It only just pipped its old all-time high. But let's have a look at it on the charts and see how it's actually going. So here's Litecoin against the US dollar. So we can see pumped really hard, big massive dump like everything did. And it's sort of following Bitcoin's chart roughly, but not quite. This is the only thing that's pleasing. Since the crash in March last year, it has been going up and it had a really big pump, but it only just beat its old all-time high, like by not very much, which is slightly disappointing. So this chart doesn't look all that good. Other than from here, it's looking nice, but you compare it to a Bitcoin chart where Bitcoin has just been going up sort of forever and a day. And this will take a while to load up, it always does. 
I mean, we've seen this chart before. I mean, look at Bitcoin. It just continues to go and go and go. Litecoin, not so much. Kind of traveling more sideways. So really, Bitcoin would have been the much better bet unless you're picking Litecoin up at these lows. And then you really got to try and ride it to the high and then, again, change it into whatever, whether you want to go into Bitcoin or USDC and then try and buy in at the lows because when you're buying at the lows, it can do all right. But it definitely looks like Bitcoin uh, would probably be the better buy at the moment. I hope Litecoin's not dead, but it isn't looking overly pretty. We go over here, and this is, again, where you see how poorly it has fared compared to Bitcoin. I mean, dropped, didn't quite, uh, or just got back to, you know, where it sort of previously was dropped, and it's just been dropping ever since until we got to about here. Now, this does seem like it's the bottom at the moment, and it is starting to rise. But look, if this can't, at least get above and again we're comparing it to satoshi so it can't at least get to above what's that 728,846 satoshis uh, if this doesn't make it to there and rolls over i would say that litecoin literally is a dead project project not in uh comparison to the dollar but it's not really doing that much better than the dollar and we know how well the dollar isn't doing against bitcoin so for me, if I don't see Litecoin really make a move and, you know, start to, you know, break these old uh, key levels. So again, that resistance there, this resistance here, and then we really need to start to be coming up and taking on these. If it can't take on those, for me, unfortunately, Litecoin's a dead project uh, and I might have to completely scale out. I was lucky I got in, sold, made a lot of money back, uh, bought back in, uh, and I'm kind of about even with Litecoin. But if it's not going to perform, then it will be something that I will cut after this bull run. And again, these are kind of the levels. I mean, if it just touches this level and rolls over, then yeah, I think Litecoin will be done for me. But last but not least, let's compare it to ETH. And it is something very similar to the Bitcoin chart. You may as well have had your money in something else. So are things about to change? Maybe. Maybe again, institutions and some more publicity. You know, again, some more development. They do have Mimble, Wimble coming, which is good. Litecoin is uh, a bit of a test net, really, before it goes on to uh, BitChain with Segwit and things like that. So, yeah, I'm not sold on Litecoin at the moment, but I bought in and I've just held out a bit of nostalgia, really. Let's wait and see whether Litecoin uh, can actually revive itself. And again, I think PayPal, once it finally goes worldwide and offers that to people, a lot more people will get into Litecoin, but whether that's enough to save it, I'm not sure. I think it needs a little bit more. All right, that's it for me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. You should all be on that game train at the moment. Things are looking pretty good, and I'll see you next time.